Boys and girls, good cats, good afternoon, I'm Laku and welcome to the second part of 2018 builds playlist. It's time to continue with the builds and uh, today we are gonna tackle on a game mode that's, well, I would say quite crucial to all players and of course that's, that mode is the wave mode, waving, so we're gonna go through a basic wave build today. And I wanna say two things, yeah, two few things before we go go through the build, go through the things. The first is, uh, my builds are not absolute, but I think they are pretty nice generalization for most players, pretty safe builds to follow, so at least for the wave levels indicated in the description, in the title and so on. Which leads me to the second point, the wave levels either aren't absolute. The main thing when you progress through from, from let's say wave 1000, to towards 100,000, you will start uh, migrating away from the witches. So if you want to do that before 100,000 waves, that's completely possible, that's completely fine. You can migrate away from the witches at 50,000 waves if you want to, or you can stick with them over 100,000 waves. So it's not, it's not absolute, but it's a pretty nice guideline for what what waves, what what kind of build you should have for these wave levels. Okay, so let's start with a battle. Let's go with all the battle this time. This is my secondary account, and I think my units are a little bit over leveled for this wave level currently. But you will get the idea of the build, how it works. Uh, in here, like in the previous video, we also have like the first three lines, three rows of, of heroes. They are the core of this build, or so. And the last line is uh, kind of optional, but also a really important part of the build. I will dig into that right in a little moment, so please be patient for a while, because we are going to start from from the top row. Here we have the Archer Trio, which is, well, almost in every build you will want to have the Archer Trio. They are really great asset, asset to you. First of all, we have the Dark Hunter to boost your Town Archers, who are one of the best units you can spend your gold on, by the way, one of the strongest units in the entire game. Uh, a viable choice would be the Bishop. If your heroes are a lot higher level than your Town Archer, for example, they would also benefit from, from Bishop. But we have the Hunter here to also give the passive attack speed boost to Dark Elf, who is one of your most important guys for MP recovery and for HP recovery during waves and other game modes. And then we have the Dark Ranger, who will get you through the bosses. She will, she she has your boss damage covered. She will she will save you quite a many times. And I recommend you set her AI to near, so that she will, if the Tauren mini boss charges towards you, she will take care of that as well. On the second row, we have one of your two main damage heroes, Flame Ogre and Lightning Sorcerer. Flame Ogre will have the crown monsters covered with the huge area damage and he does a better job than the fire wizard in that aspect so you will want the flame ogre one of the strongest units you will have and the dark lightning sorcerer will take care of the air so it's the air counterpart of of flame ogre one of you two of your main main damaging units if you look at the results when you progress yeah my units are a little overleveled still so as you progress through towards 100,000 at some point the three main heroes you will the three three main dudes here the top three damage dealers you will have are most likely the town archers a flame ogre and dark lightning sorcerer so those three are a really safe choice to spend your gold on and they are a really good choice to level up and on third we have the dark ice wizard to give a little passive boost to Dark Lightning Sorcerer, but also give you a little crowd control over over the crown mobs. And I would also set him to attack near so that he will freeze the Tauren when he charges towards your castle. On the third row, Dark Necromancer, Pure Wizard, the core units on every game mode, so let's not dig into those. Uh, and we have the Alice, one of the witches here. And the, and the second one here. We have only two witches, so I have I've left out one witch already from the build. As I said, you will slowly migrate away from the witches. They are a great choice of heroes, and in early games they will carry you through the waves quite easy, and they will 
they are a huge help on your colony so don't don't ignore them completely but at some point you will most likely migrate away from them so we have ditched one so we have this lisa from this build we have the two two witches here which leads us to the optional part of the build if you want only one witch for example that's completely fine you can take someone else in place of dorothy if you have leveled someone else you could take the giants for example so of course the, the wizard will boost each other so giants will be will have to be a little more higher leveled to be able to compete with dorothy here but you could take uh, you could take the giants or you could take bishop if you need someone mana cheap or you could take like for for example ice windy to just slow the crown monsters down to give your flame ogre and town archers time to deal with those that's also a viable choice or succubus with the middle promotion uh hero you don't need to level up so it's a really really cheap choice to test level 40 is enough for this hero forever so it's that's up to you but if you want to stick with the two witches that's also completely fine it works and i i think i'm gonna go with this build for a long time on this account uh then the last two guys military band to boost your gold income if you do manual battle or paid out of battle you will have this guy in your build i don't want to see any builds with with manual or paid out of battle that doesn't have the military band in it because it's a huge boost to your gold income and same same goes for the orc band it will make more monsters appear per wave which translates to more gold per wave but it also makes the waves a lot uh, harder to, to beat so if you're struggling if you're not strong enough you can uh, you can switch him out to someone else like you could stake some of the previously mentioned heroes or smith slash stoss for example if you need some more hp or mp recovery to farm a little gold and become stronger but if you can handle be sure to have this guy as well because it's you don't need to use the wave skipping if you don't want to but it's just for the extra monsters extra gold castle part wise we have the gold castle to boost your gold income a little like take every gold boost item you can get for your wave build i can say this <laughs> often enough and then we have the lightning castle and the minigun which I think are the two safest choices for, for castle parts, the strongest strongest choices for waves. And for the bottom parts, just pick whichever you think looks, look, looks the best. It's all about the fashion. For the bottom parts, they all suck. Town buildings. Uh, oh god, I look tired. Sorry for that. Uh, town buildings, uh, mine for gold, of course. And spring water, a great, great, great great building for your cooldowns and then hero guild or archer guild depending if you have leveled archers or heroes more i don't confuse hero heroes are the 12 guys sitting here not the leader so hero guild will help these guys right here i'm taking hero guild even though my archers are the number one right here so i could just switch to archer guild and they will they will be boosted even further but that's that's up to you to decide uh, towers you will want to have the golden tower the golden tree and the trophy for extra gold golden tree also works for free of it free out of battle with the worthless coin so you will want to have have the golden tree in every single wave build you have uh, and then the thunder tower the only tower really doing any damage at all in this game uh, set to flying of course and then we have the frozen tower which you don't need to level up a lot this is completely fine level for the frozen tower but he works pretty nice nice in, in synergy with the zero leader which leads us to the leader part big zero if you have leveled him i don't think i have ever mentioned it before in any of my videos but this guy is pretty much the best leader ever so it's completely safe to stick with zero on all game modes if you wish to if you have level thor a lot it's a viable choice as well or if you wish to afk for a little longer if you use paid out of battle and you need to stock up a little more crystals go with the tony and treasure wise the cursed knife and sub arrow are a great great combo and then for the rest lots just take gold boost items the golden heart 
the gold bar and the bronze piece. If you are using paid auto battle you can switch bronze piece to worthless coin because it also gives you plus 15% bonus gold if you are using the paid, paid auto battle time compared to plus 13%. It's a minor minor plus but a little extra gold never hurts. So that's, that's up to you but take the gold boost treasure, don't use golems, don't use any you shouldn't be. You shouldn't need to use any damage stuff other than the uh, sharp arrow. If you need to, just try to farm a little more to become a little stronger because you will want the extra gold as much as possible. Trust me. That's all for the wave build. Let me know what you think. Does this help you? Have you tried any other builds that have worked for you? But I would say this is pretty safe build to use up to 100,000 waves or so. I'm Laku, thanks for watching, remember to hit the like button and if you haven't done so, remember to subscribe so you will see all of my great videos as soon as I can make and upload those. Thanks for watching, I'm gonna see you next time, goodbye!